Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Shalom, Israel. Most high Christ bless. I'm Officer Hezekiah with IUIC Raleigh. To my right. Off supply. All right. Today's topic is don't be anxious, but obtain patience in the Lord. All right. Don't be anxious, but obtain patience in the Lord. All right. Let's start off with that definition of patience. Number one. Let's start there. Let's go. All right. Read the uh, first one for me. Patient. Able to accept and tolerate delays, problems, are suffering without being becoming annoyed or anxious. Being patient, your time will come. So it says able to accept or tolerate delays, problems, or suffer without becoming annoyed or anxious. That's why don't be anxious, but obtain patience in the Lord. Because as a people, we like instant gratification. We get uh, like Bishop went over battle fatigued. So now we need patience in the Lord. And I'm going to... Go over, to, go over some scriptures to help us with that. Luke 21, verse 19. Let's start there. Luke, Luke, Luke. Oh, Luke 21. Yeah, 21, verse 19. Yes, sir. Because often we use this scripture a lot in, in certain matters, but I'm going to give you the context within being patient in the Lord. The book of Luke, chapter 21, and verse 19. Bring it out. In your patience, possess ye your souls. So the Bible says, in your patience, possess ye your souls. How do you possess your soul? Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians 4, start at verse 1. Sir, we're going to read to verse 4. The book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4 and verse 1. Furthermore, when ye, furthermore then ye, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as you have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. So the topic is about abounding in God and walking in him by keeping his commandments. Read. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. So you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. Read. For this is the will of God, mm -hmm. even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Uh -huh. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel. How to what? Possess his vessel uh -huh. in sanctification and honor. So possessing your soul or possessing your vessel is keeping the commandments in Christ, the faith of his son, Jesus of Christ, the black Messiah, and abstain from fornication. Hey. So that's how you be patient in the Lord. That's how you, uh, in your patience, possess ye your soul. Let's go to Revelation 14, 12. We read this often. Sure. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. The book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 12. Uh -huh. Here is the patience of the saints. Uh -huh. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Because our patience is different. We hear that often. But with our patience is different. Give me that in Surah 20, verse 32. This is what I mean. Because we hear patience, be patient, be patient. And we think on a, a level of uh, mortality. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, right now or certain things that's going on in your life. But it goes more in depth than that with our patience. Our patience means something when we are in pa when we patient in the Lord. Read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 20 and verse 32. Necessary patience. What? Necessary patience uh -huh. in seeking the Lord is better than he that leadeth his life without a God. So we have necessary patience. Our patience is necessary because we're supposed to be having patience in the Lord. So our patience is necessary so we may get out of this captivity. But it says that lead of his life, read it again. Necessary patience in seeking the Lord is better than he that lead of his life without a God. And we need that God. That guide is the Bible or our teacher or our elders teaching us the true way of walk in the commandments of God and having the faith in Jesus Christ by their example. Give me that in Titus 2 and 11. So while we have a necessary patience in the Lord, we must uh, take advantage of the grace that was given. Give me that Titus 2. 
The book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. So it says what? Read it again. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. It will appear to all the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. Teaching us. What? Teaching us. So in our patience, the grace is teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world. See that there? We must be learning these things in our necessary patience because in our patience in the Lord, we must get ourselves right. You understand? Give me that Sirach now. Go jumped. Uh, I'm sorry, X8. Sure. Give me that in X. Now go back to Sirach 20 verse 32 because sure. I want that last part again about the guide. I want to hear that again. Just one more time. Sure. The book of Sirach, chapter 20 and verse 32. Let's go! Necessary patience in seeking the Lord is better than he that leadeth his life without a God. Because without a God, we are leading into destruction. But what's with that God? Acts 8, verse 30. Acts chapter 8 and verse 30. Uh -huh. And Philip ran thither to him mm -hmm. and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Mm -hmm. And he said, How can I? Except some man should guide me. And we still need that guidance for my leaders, for my elders, for my uh, people that is well studied in the, in the word and guide our life while we still patient in the Lord. Hey. You understand? Let's go to uh, 2 Peter 3 and 9. Because Christ himself, Christ is long suffering with us. Uh, we can, he's long suffering with us so we can get ourselves right. Give me that 2 Peter 3 and 9. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, and verse 9. Mm -hmm. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, mm -hmm. as some men count slackness, mm -hmm. but is long suffering to usward. And Peter know that personally because he walked with Christ. Let's get some examples. Matthew 17, verse 24. Sure. Watch this. Give me that uh the second picture, uh, the second one, showing that Christ is dealing with Peter. Watch this now. Read that, thick, uh, read that for me, yes, sir. Matthew chapter 17, verse 24. Uh -huh. And when they would come to Capernaum, they received tribute money. They that received tribute money came to Peter uh -huh. and said, Doth your master pay tribute? Uh -huh. He said, Yes. And when he, had was, when he was coming to the house, Jesus prevented him, saying. So why did Christ have to stop Peter when he came in the house? Because he was upset. He was upset about that thing. So Christ stopped him. Read. What thinkest thou, Simon? What are you thinking about? What, what's in your mind right now, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Do the people, do the nations of the earth take custom or tribute? Go ahead. Of their own children or of strangers? Come on. Peter saith unto him, of strangers. Jesus saith unto him, then are the children free. Telling him to be patient. We have to go through this. We're in captivity. That's what he's showing Peter right now. This a part of the. Te this comes with the the territory of being in captivity. You have to be patient. Give me Matthew 18, 21, 22. Another thing he told Peter. Matthew chapter eighteen and verse twenty one. Mm -hmm. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times. So Peter had a problem with a brother. He had a problem with a brother. Watch what Christ responded to him. Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until 70, uh, until 70 times seven. So you have to be patient with your brother, Peter. That's another thing. You got to be patient with his brother now. Christ is teaching Peter how to be patient. You understand? Give me now another example, Matthew 26 and 50. Just dealing with Peter, because Peter had every right to say that in his, uh, his epistle. Because he walked with Christ and Christ taught him patience. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 50. Uh -huh. And Jesus said unto him, friend, wherefore art thou come? So Christ is being uh, betrayed by Judas Iscariot. And Christ, I mean, Judas kissed uh, Christ to show that he's the one, the Messiah that it was talking about. All right. So read it again. And Jesus said unto him, friend, wherefore art thou come? Mm. Then came they and laid hands on Jesus mm. and took him. Uh-huh. And behold, one of them with Jesus stretched out his hand uh -huh. and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. So that was Peter. Let's prove that. Just hold that. John 18, 10. Yes, sir. Let's just prove that's Peter real quick. 
John 18, 10. Book of John. Read it 12. Yes, sir. The book of John, chapter 18 and verse 10. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote off the priest and smote the high priest's servant. See, that was Peter. Just go back. That's all I wanted. Sir. Just to prove that was Peter. Read it again. The book of Matthew, chapter 26 and verse 50. And Jesus said unto him, friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus uh -huh. and took him. Mm -hmm. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Uh -huh. Then said Jesus unto him, put up again thy sword into his place. Mm -hmm. And for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. So Christ corrected Peter. Read on. Thinkest thou that I cannot pray to my father uh -huh. and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? Go ahead. But how shall, but how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled? That thus it must be. Patience, Peter. You jump in the gun. That's not, this, that's not written in the scriptures. For you to cut a man ear off before I die. You're not learning. You're not listening. Why? Why did Christ keep getting on Peter like that? Watch this in John 21, 15. Watch this. It's going to prove why Peter was acting that way. Watch this. The book of John, chapter 21, and verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Uh -huh. He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou thinkest, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. Uh -huh. He saith unto him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. Uh -huh. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Go ahead. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he had saith unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. Patience. Watch this. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest. Mm -hmm. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands and another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. So Christ is showing Peter you have a young spirit and that with a young spirit, you're impatient. That's why Christ was teaching him patience. He was young in spirit. He said, but when you be old, Peter, old in spirit, you're going to see the patience. You're going to see what I'm talking about. Somebody, you're going to be put to death for my name's sake. You understand that? So, patience is necessary. As an Israelite, we must obtain patience in the Lord. Because without patience, we'll be, we'll be uh, left in our own demise. We'll lose hope. Watch this. Uh, Proverbs 13, 12. While we wait, sir. Proverbs 13, 12. Once we start losing our hope, our patience will have ran out. And we don't need that. We don't need our patience to run out in the Lord. Sir. Watch this. And we won't get more into that while I say that. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 13 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. So if we lose that patience in the Lord, our hope in the Lord, our heart becomes sick. We lose our wits. We lose our mind. Because all the evil that's around us, we have started to go that route. Because that's more that's more fun. Because sin is fun. But we got to stay patient in the Lord. James 4. Yes, sir. Because within the video, it speaks about more about in depth about being patient. About how that patient, if you wait long enough, is show you your your uh where you want to be and want, the more you be patient. But we read James 4 and 1. Basically, this is what sir. the video is saying in this script. The book of James, chapter 4 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. From whence cometh wars and fightings among you? Mm -hmm. Come they not hence, even of your lust, that war in your members? So we got, we got things to fight off within us. In our patience, in our patience, we must fight off these things. This is what wars in our members, right? Ye lust and have not. Uh -huh. Ye kill and desire to have mm -hmm. and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not. Mm -hmm. Because ye ask not. Because we ask not more. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, mm. that ye may consume it upon your lust. Uh-huh. You read on? Yep. Ye adulteress and adulteresses, 
Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Uh -huh. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So all that within our patience, we must fight the wars that's within us. Because the world is enemy is enemy to God. So all them things that be happening in the world, it feeds our members within us. So we must fight these things all while we wait on the Lord. Oh, you understand? Romans 5. Sure. Romans 5. Let's start at verse 1. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus so Christ. We are justified in our patience while we keep the commandments in the faith of Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, right? By whom also we have access by faith unto this grace. You see that there? So in our grace, we must obtain the patience and not be anxious and find out this sins that's within us, right? Wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Go ahead. Don't get faint. Go ahead. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations. So in our patience, we're going to go through tribulations. Expect that. Read. Also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, uh -huh. and patience experience. Go ahead. And experience hope. So you have to go through these things to obtain that, pa the, to uh, grow in your patience. You understand? In the Lord. Read. And hope maketh not ashamed. So now your hope won't be deferred like we read earlier. You won't be ashamed in it because you know what you're trying to end goal. You know what you're trying to get to. Read. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Our praise is given number three. Give us number three with Bishop. The Bishop quote. I'll be uh, screenshotting Bishop quotes. It'd be good. Watch this. Read. Let's get that. Go ahead. The secret of change is to focus all of your spiritual energy. Not on fighting the old, but on building the new. You know, that hit heavy for me. Because I was so focused on building the old, I wasn't looking at the new. I didn't even see the good within me because I'm focused on getting the old right. But read that again. The secret of change. It was a secret because I didn't know. <laughs> is to focus all of your spiritual energy not on fighting the old, but on building the new. Meaning getting yourself right and focus and just do the work. Do the work, focus on the good qualities you have. And go take on. Keep going. Do the work. Don't stop. Don't be battle fatigued. Don't be impatient. Right. Let's get into the video, Bishop. Number four. Watch this. Coming back today because he's trying to get Start more over. Israelites to coming back today uh -huh. because he's trying to get more Israelites to come in. And trying to get you and me to get ourselves together. Get your act together, you niggas! <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's focus on getting ourselves right in this patience while we're waiting on the Lord. Because believe it or not, Christ is patiently waiting to deliver us or he waiting on us to return. That's right. I say Christ either waiting to deliver us, he waiting to deliver us, or he waiting on our return. Let me give you an example of what I mean by that. Let's get on waiting on us to return. Get at seven to give you an example. What did it mean by Christ waiting on us to return? At 7, let's start at 54. We're going to read at 56. So this is the history of Stephen. Stephen was filled with the Holy Ghost and went at the uh, scribes and Pharisees. He was going to tear them up in the word, in the scriptures. They got mad and they wanted to kill him. But watch this. Acts chapter 7 and verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. So the Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes was cut to the heart, read. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. Uh -huh. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, Give me number five. Go ahead. looked up steadfastly into heaven uh -huh. and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Read that again. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven mm -hmm. and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Read on. And said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. John, verse 59. Verse 59. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Uh -huh. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And, he, and when he had said this, he fell asleep. So the Lord stood. Usually you hear that Christ sitting on the right hand of God. But he said he's standing when he's seen uh, Stephen's martyrdom. Don, it, this was the first account 
of martyrdom for Christ's sake. You understand? So when Christ stood, when they said Christ stood up, he was welcoming uh, stepping in. You know what I'm saying? Ah. It was precious to him. Give me that in the song one night, 116, verse 15. That was precious to Christ. Bring it out. Believe it or not, watch. Psalms chapter 116, verse 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. You see that? that? Read that again. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So that's an example that Christ is waiting on us to return. Because some of us got to die in his truth and our patience. Right? But also it says waiting to deliver us too. Christ got to wait to deliver us. What you mean Christ got to wait to deliver us? Go to Mark 13 verse 32. Sir. Mark 13 verse 32. Watch Let's this. Go. Christ has to wait to deliver us too. Watch this. The book of Mark, chapter 13 and verse 32. Uh-huh. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels which are in heaven. So the angels don't know when Jesus Christ is returning. Neither the Son, but the Father. You see that? So Christ don't even know when he's returning. He got to wait to deliver us as well. Hey. You understand? Read on. Take ye heed. Watch and pray, mm -hmm. for ye know not when the time is. Well, in your patience, while you waiting on me, or you got to come back to me when you are uh, dying in martyrdom for the truth's sake? He says, hey, what? Take ye heed, watch and pray, uh -huh. for ye know not when the time is. We don't know when the time is. Read. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, uh -huh. who left his house and gave authority to his servants, and to every man his work, and commanded the porter, the porter to watch. Uh -huh. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, mm -hmm. at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. You don't know when Christ returning. So he, in your patience, you better keep the faith of Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, and the, keep uh, applying the commandments to your <laughs> life. Read. Lest coming suddenly he finds you sleeping. Lest he catch you lacking. Because you lost patience, because you got anxious. Read. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. You must watch. Let's now jump to Isaiah 6, 3 and 4. Because believe it or not, while Christ waiting to deliver us, or waiting to us to go back to him, because Cap said something heavy to me one time. He said, we just, we just angels came to this earth to do the bidding of the Lord. That's We just came down to do a job. You understand? But likewise, within this time, we must wait on the Lord or wait till he deliver us. Because right now, Christ is just waiting to do his last fulfillment, which is vengeance. That's all he's thinking about right now. Watch. Isaiah 63 and 4. Isaiah chapter 63 and verse 4. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart. Where is the day of vengeance of Christ? In mine heart. So that's all he's thinking about. He already did his duty on earth. Now he's waiting on us, like Bishop said. Waiting on us to get ourselves together. You understand? Yes. Gather together, old nation, not desire. Right? Give me uh, Zephaniah 3 and 8. So while he's thinking on vengeance, this is what he's doing. So he got to wait patiently. So Christ got to wait to deliver us until God give him that order, his father. Zephaniah 3 and 8. Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 8. Uh -huh. Therefore, wait ye upon me. Give me number 6. Read it again. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord. God said, wait upon me, saith the Lord. Wait. Wait, wait, be patient. Read. Until the day that I rise up to the prey. Uh-huh. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms, to pour upon them mine indignation. It's so he may pour out his indignation. What are the other pictures? There's more pictures I have with it. Read it again from the top. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord. Until the day that I rise up to the prey, uh -huh. for my determination is to gather the nations, mm -hmm. that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. It's the fire of my jealousy. Because Christ got to wait. That's what he's ready to get off of him. He's waiting to, sh waiting to show his indignation to the nations for what they have done to us. Hey. Isaiah 42, 13. Sure. So Christ had to be patient. He had to be patient as well. Book of Isaiah, chapter 42 and verse 13. 
The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. I should go forth as a mighty man. Uh-huh. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. Like a what? Like a man of war. Oh, believe it or not, that's what he is. He is a man of war. Read. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Uh huh. I have long time holding my peace. God has been waiting a long time. Christ has been waiting a long time patiently to let their indignation get off him. You understand? Because what's in his heart? Vengeance. 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 Read on. Is it more? I have long time holding my peace. Uh-huh. I have been still. He's been patient. Christ telling you I'm being patient. Read. And refrain myself. I had to refrain myself because my father had given me that order to come back and save. The Israelites, read. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I'm going to cry like a travailing woman. If you ain't ever heard a pregnant woman uh, in pregnancy and delivering a baby, it's a loud cry, read. I will destroy and devour at once. Read. I will make waste mountains and hills. Governments, the smaller governments, go ahead. And dry up all the earth. Uh-huh. And I will make the rivers islands, and I will dry up the pools. So God, Christ, I've been waiting I've been waiting for this day. You understand? You ain't going to just kill this man on earth and he go back to the father. He's just going to sit there and be nice when he come back. All he, all he is is thinking about the day of vengeance. You understand? Because there's a lot of wickedness going on. But we, as the children of Israel, we cannot lose our patience. We can't get <clears throat> ancients. All right? Give me that uh, James 5, verse 11. I mean, uh, verse 7. Yes, sir. The book James of James. 5, verse 7. Yes, sir. The book of James, chapter 5 and verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. So Christ, James told us to what? Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. He said, be patient unto the coming of the Lord. Read. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth. Mm-hmm. What you do with your uh, precious fruit? You either pick it or you eat it, right? So... When it comes to that, you will do something with that fruit. So we have that precious fruit of Christ. Read. And have long patience for it yep. until we have received the early and latter rain. Says, and have long patience for it. Read. Be ye also patient. So as Christ being patient, we have to be patient. Read. Establish your heart. So in this time while we in our patience, establish your hearts in the word of God. Continue to uh, study, pray, and apply. Read. Read. For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Read. Grudge not one against another, so brother. So in the your patience, don't be grudging one another. Read. Lest ye be condemned. You'll be condemned. Then your, your whole walk is in vain because you got a grudge against a brother. Read. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Christ is standing at the door. Read. Take my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord mm-hmm. for an example of the suffering, affliction, and the patience. So we're going to suffer affliction and of patience. So we still got to have our patience when time get worse because it's going to get worse. Man. You understand? Battle fatigue, as Bishop was saying. Don't get battle fatigued. Read. Behold, we count them happy which endure. We count them happy which endure because they got patience in the Lord and they understand the end goal. Read. Ye have heard of the patience of Job. What happened? Ye have heard of the patience of Job. Uh Uh-huh. And have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Let's go to Job 42 and 12. What was the end of Job? Because... Bishop always said, Job's life is, is like ours. His life was symbolic to ours today, the church of Israel. So what was his ending of all the affliction he went through? Job 42, let me get there. Job 42, well, verse, verse 12. We're going to start at 12. Yes, sir. And we know Job <laughs> lost his sons. He lost his land. He lost his finances and everything. So Job 42, we're going to read verse 12. Job chapter 42 and verse 12. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. So we are going to get blessed more than the beginning when we was ruling the earth before. Read. For he had 14,000 sheep uh-huh. and 6,000 camels mm-hmm. and 1,000 yoke of oxen and 1,000 she asses. He also had seven sons and three daughters. So, all, them, um, all them pictures. So 
What this is saying is that we're going to get the kingdom of heaven when we have the patience of the Lord. And men going to be back in their right state and women going to be back in their right state. Again, we're going to be back on top again. That's you understand? So read that again. Uh, verse uh, 13, uh, 12. Verse 12. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job, just like he'll bless us with our patience in the Lord. Read. More than his beginning. More than his what? More than his beginning. That's what God going to do for us if we hold patience in the Lord and not be anxious and run away. Read. For he had 14,000 sheep uh -huh. and 6,000 camels and 1,000 yoke of oxen and 1,000 sheep asses. Give me, sir, uh, uh, give me that Isaiah 13. Yes, sir. Give me Isaiah 13. Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 12. Let me get that with you. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Pull up them images again. Read it again. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. So God said he will make a man more precious and fine gold. Read. Even a man more, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. So this is what you see that the God will make man and precious. Read it again. I won't mess it up. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Because that's what you're going to obtain if you have patience in the Lord. You understand? While you're working on yourself in this life, fighting off the members within you, and still having the faith in Jesus Christ going through your afflictions, you will be that man more precious than fine gold. Give me that in uh, Isaiah 48 and 9. Sir. Isaiah 48 and 9. The book of Isaiah, chapter 48 and verse 9. For my name's sake will I defer, defer my anger. So Christ said, for my name's sake, I will defer my anger. Read. And for my praise will I refrain for thee, that I cut thee not off. That he will not cut us off. Read. Behold. I have refined thee, but not with silver. I didn't refine you with silver. Go ahead. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. But this time I'm going to choose you by your afflictions. You must go through these afflictions and have that, obtain, uh, and have that patience in Christ. Read. For mine own sake. For Christ's sake. Even for mine own sake will I do it. Mm -hmm. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. He will not give his glory to another people, uh, uh, only to the 12 tribes of Israel. But you got to be patient in them. Read on. Hearken unto me. You see that? O Jacob and Israel, my call. Uh -huh. I am he. I am the first. I also am the last. So Christ is, is Christ telling you, I'm going to choose you going through the affliction and having faith in me. So we must obtain the patience of the Lord. Sirach 1, verse 23. The book of Sirach, chapter 1 and verse 23. Let me get there with you. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. A patient man will bear for a time. So a patient man will bear for a time. That's us. We are patient men that's a bear and women that's bearing for a time. Read. And afterward, joy shall spring up unto him. That's the kingdom of heaven. That's having patience in the Lord, not being anxious, running away, not giving up or giving in. You understand? Let's jump to Sirach 2 now. Let's start at verse 1. We got a lot of reading, so you can take your time. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. The book of Sirach, chapter 2 and verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So it says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. What temptation? Dealing with yourself, hey. dealing with your marriage, hey. and dealing with the congregation. Hey. So we must obtain the patience in the Lord through those three trials of faith. And also, even the affliction that will come upon us on the outside sources. That's it. Do you understand? So it's going to get worse. But we got to obtain the, uh, the patience in the Lord. Read it again for me. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord... Prepare thy soul for temptation. So prepare your minds. Read. Set thy heart aright. Because that's the first thing to go when you go through temptation. You start to baffle in your mind. Satan got you all in there. You shouldn't stay. You should go. You shouldn't be here. Then you're losing your patience. Or the cares of this world start to get to you. We got to build up our mental strength, our spirit. Read. And constantly endure. He said constantly endure. Do not give up. Read. 
and make not haste in time of trouble. Because we're people that leave. If something happened, man, I'm out. We'll run real quick when stuff start to happen or arises. Read. Huh? Cleave unto him. You say what now? Cleave unto him. How did you cleave unto Christ? So hold that. Surah 37. I think it's verse 17, if I'm not mistaken. Or is it 25 and 12? Surah 25 and 12. Yes, sir. The book of Surah. Let me get that with you to make sure. Yes, sir. Yes. Surah 25 and 12. The book of Surah, chapter 25 and verse 12. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of his love. Uh -huh. And faith. And what? And faith uh -huh. is the beginning of cleaving unto him. See that there? So cleaving unto Christ is praying to the Lord. You got to pray to him for having faith in him. So you don't lose patience in him or be anxious to get up out of here. We'll go back to Sirach 2. Sirach chapter 2 and verse 3. Cleave unto him. Have faith in Christ. And depart not away. Uh-huh. That thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Did we not just read that in Job? He was increased at his last end. Hey. His life is symbolic to the Israelites today in captivity. Read. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. Battle fatigue, affliction. A lot of us going to be resisted unto death. A lot of us going to go through trials every day. God said what? Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. We must learn how to do that. It's going to take patience to learn how to do that. The more we go through things and overcome, the more we get more faithful to Christ. Read. And be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. Because we're going to be changed into lower states. We're going to change. Our whole spirit is going to be changed once they start locking us up. Kill us. They start to, uh, the, the insurrection that's going to happen. You understand? Our minds, we're going to change quick. You're like, oh, it's not what's going on here. But you got to remember you got to recall your mind to the Lord. Hold that. Give me, uh, hold that. Lamentations 3. Yes, sir. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 21. This I recall to my mind. What did Je uh, Jeremiah say? This I recall to my mind. He said, this right here I recall to my mind. Because why? His people got enslaved and went to Babylonian captivity. His mind was changed to a lower state. His Earth. mind was changed. He said, what? This I recall to my mind. Uh -huh. Therefore have I hope. So this right here, I had to recall in my mind to keep my hope intact. To have my faith in Christ. Uh, have my faith intact. Read. It is of the Lord's mercies. It is of the Lord's mercies. That we are not consumed. As a nation of people, we are not consumed. Read. Because his compassions fail not. Because his compassion doesn't fail. He loves us. Even though we're going through this affliction, or we will be going through afflictions, Christ will love us. He's still going to love us when we hold that patience. We recall these things to our mind. Read. They are new every morning. Every day you wake up, your faith, I mean, your compassion that Christ had on you is new every morning. Because you're supposed to die through the, what you did through that day. But he decided to have compassion on you to have you to live every day to keep the work going. Hey. To, live, to, to live by him. Read. Great is thy faithfulness. So great is his faithfulness. So Christ faithful to us. He was faithful to us when he was on earth even to now. He's still going, he's still going to choose the 12 tribes of Israel. So we likewise have to have that faith in him. We must obtain that patience in the Lord and not be anxious. Is it more? Yes, sir. Go ahead. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. We're the only people that have the Lord our portion. And the Lord said he, we his portion. You know what I'm talking about? The Israel his portion. Give me that next. Uh, oh, well, just go ahead and read. Yes, sir. I look for it. Therefore will I have hope in him. He said what? Therefore will I hope in him. So he said, I will have hope in him. Because we don't supposed to lose our hope in Christ. He was faithful to us. We're going to be faithful to him. Hey. You understand? Is there more? You want the last two verses? Go ahead. The Lord is good unto them that wait ah, for him. Read it again. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. So God said he's good to those that wait for him. Read. To the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. And that's what we have to do. We have to be quietly patient for the Lord. Meaning study, pray, and apply and be patient unto the Lord. Give me that one. Uh, let me see. 
Uh, give me uh, Psalm 16, 5. Little shark tooth. Yeah, we go back there. Go, go to Psalm 16, 5. Just say this. David said the same thing when he was changed to a lower state. Let's go back there. Psalm 16 and 5. Yep. Book of Psalms, chapter 16 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance. What did he say? The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance. So when David was changed to a lower state, he said what? Read it again. The Lord is is the portion of mine inheritance. So it says the Lord is the portion of my inheritance. That's what David understood when he changed to a lower state. So when we be changed to a lower state, we got to recall these things to our mind. We, and of my cup, uh -huh. thou manifest, thou maintainest my lot. Yeah, maintain this in my lot. Let's go back to Psalms 2. Yes, sir. I mean, Sirach 2. Sirach chapter 2 and verse 4. Uh-huh. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. So Jeremiah took it cheerfully. David took his to che uh, cheerfully. And that was changed to a lower state, but they were still had to glorify the Lord in that lower state. Read. And be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. Hey, pull out that video, if y'all can get it now. Because it just goes into it. It just keeps talking about it. or simply accomplishing personal growth. Here's the thing, practicing patience will help us to be both healthier and happier. For starters, when we take the time to think things through without rushing to satisfy our own wants and needs, we are able to improve the way we listen to others, which helps our relationships. Patiently taking time with natural learning and developmental processes also helps us to allow them to fully take their course and not to stop before they're through. So just as a farmer after sowing seeds must patiently wait for them to germinate, grow, and produce a harvest, we too must patiently wait for the beneficial processes in our lives to be entirely completed so that we can achieve the maximum benefit of these. It is when we put this into our daily routine that we live wisely. Now, go to James 1. Because he said that we would have patience entirely. So in our patience, like I said before, we'll go through afflictions. We'll go through our own personal selves. We'll go through marriage and uh, congregation. But watch what James says about that. I think it's James 1 and verse 3. James chapter 1 and verse 3. Knowing this. Two, two, two. Verse 2. My brethren. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Because we will fall into diverse temptations. Watch this. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So we'll be tried on our faith. And it supposed to work patience. Watch this. But let patience have her perfect work. Because the patience is going to have its perfect work. That's what the video was saying. But this is what God's saying. That's what it got it from. Read it again. But let patience have her perfect work. Because patience is supposed to make you perfect when you're going through your tribulations. You're still supposed to apply God's laws and commandments and have the faith of his son, Jesus Christ. Read. That ye may be perfect and entire. You see that? Read that again. That ye may be perfect and entire. That's the point of going through diverse temptations. Have a patience in the Lord and grow up to that that. A uh, statue of Christ as we're supposed to be, or being that woman of God that we're supposed to be, you must go through diverse temptations. And you must have patience. Read. Wanting nothing. And lacking nothing because you went through so much diverse temptations. We know we're going to lose everything. We may lose everything. We are. But you know that Jesus Christ is our refuge. You understand? Let's go back. Yes, sir. The book of Sirach, chapter 2 and verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire. So gold is tried in the fire. What does fire do to go? It cleans out the, it removes the impurities in the gold to make it fresh. That take patience. That take, that take time. Read. And acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. And acceptable men, acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. What makes a man acceptable? You go be patient through your adversity. Right. You understand? You keep growing, enduring. Read on. Believe in him and he will help thee. God said, believe in him and he will help thee. You understand? Give me that in Isaiah because Christ had to say things many times. Uh, let me see. Can I find it? Um, he told us to be patient. He was like, oh, I will help thee. There it is. Uh, Isaiah 41 and verse 10. So okay. in our patience or through our afflictions, we must 
obtain patience in the Lord. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 41 and verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. So Christ said, I'm with you. Go ahead. Be not dismayed. Because a lot of things are going to come at us. It said, whatsoever thou go, whatsoever thou go through, it says, uh, let me read it again. Got two. 42, uh, Sirach 2. Sirach 2 and 4. Mm, whatsoever. Sirach chapter 2 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, mm -hmm. take cheerfully. Go back. The book of Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. Mm -hmm. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. Because whatsoever going to be upon us, you supposed to take it cheerfully. Read. For I am thy God. He had to remind us because we're going to lose that sight when we go through our afflictions. We lose it. We'll be like, we, our, our house is about to be taken. Oh, God, why is this happening? You start to lose it real quick. You start to doubt real quick. But you got to recall these things to your mind. Read. I will strengthen thee. Uh-huh. Yay. I will help thee. Christ said he will what? I will help Christ thee. Christ said he will help us. Read. Yay. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Come on. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. The ones that's against you going to be ashamed and confounded. Read. They shall be as nothing. That they, shot, that they strive with thee shall perish. Whoever striving with you or, or going against you shall perish. That's what God is telling you. I will help you. But you got to be patient. Watch. Huh. Read. Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them. Uh -huh. Even them that contend with thee. Because Christ going to wipe them out for messing with us. Read. They that war against thee shall be as nothing. Because in Revelation it says the dragon was wroth and made war with the saints. And that's what hap that will happen. Read. And as a thing of not, uh -huh. for I, the Lord, thy God, will hold thy right hand. So God is our strength. God is our portion. Read. Saying unto thee, fear not. What did God say? Fear not. Fear not. Go ahead. I will help thee. Why he still reminding us that he will help us? Because we're going to lose our, lose our moment. We're going to do whatsoever that take upon us. We're not going to take it cheerfully. We're going to lose our mind for a second. But that's why Jeremiah, even uh, David said, we call these things to your mind. Remember the Lord. Don't lose yourself. Read. Fear not, thou worm Jacob. Uh-huh. And ye men of Israel, I will help thee. He's saying it again. I will help thee. Read. Saith the Lord. Uh -huh. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Because he is the Holy One of Israel. Read. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument. Having teeth. I will make your new sharp instrument having teeth. Read. Thou shalt thrust the mountains. You will destroy the, uh, uh, the bigger governments. Go ahead. And beat them small. Uh-huh. And shalt make the hills as chaff. You're going to make the smaller governments to dust. Read. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away. Go ahead. And the whirlwind shall scatter them. Uh-huh. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel. All praise it to the Lord God of Israel, because we need that. Because right now we serve the Lord God with fear. God don't want us to serve him with fear. But he got the Christ had to wait until God gave him that order. Let's go back to Sirach 2. The book of Sirach, chapter 2 and verse 5. Let me get there. Oh, no. Nah. Yes, sir. Uh, where we at? Verse uh, we're, on, we're on 6. 6, go ahead. Believe in him, mm -hmm. and he will help thee. And he always said it through the Bible, believe in me. Because many times when you read in the scriptures, when Christ was on earth, he said, do thou believest I can do this? And then they said, I'll, give me that. I'm going to give you an example. Go to Mark 9. I'm going to show you an example. Mark 9 and this right. This is us in a nutshell. Mark 9 and verse, uh, let's start at 20. Bring it out. The book of Mark, chapter 9 and verse 20. Uh-huh. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. So it was a man that had a son that the disciples could not uh, take out the spirit from the young boy. So they brought the young boy to Christ. Read it read again. And when they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foam. Uh -huh. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came on him, unto him? And that this was the spirit he had. Read. And he said, of a child. He had it since he was a child, Lord. Go ahead. And oft times it cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. Uh -huh. But... If thou canst do anything, 
have compassion on us and help us. Now, that's it. There you go again. This is the father talking to Christ says, have compassion on me and help us. Right, Read. Jesus said what? unto him. Listen closely. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. So Christ was putting the faith there already. He always asked that. Do you believe I can do this? Or you can have faith that I can do this? Read. And straightway, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Come on. Lord, I believe. Come on. Help thou mine unbelief. We always have a little doubt as a people. Hey. We believe, but we always had that little doubt. He had that right there with Christ. Christ was right there with him. And he seen Christ uh, uh, did miracles and so on and so forth. But he had a little doubt back there. And that's how we all begin when we get changed to a lower state. We have that little doubt for a second. But that's why we got to recall these things to our mind. You understand? We must have patience in the Lord. That's why he keeps saying, I will help thee. Read on, read on. And straightway. I'm sorry. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, mm -hmm. saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. Uh -huh. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him, and he was as one dead, in so much as many said he is dead. Uh -huh. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. So we must have that faith and that patience in Jesus Christ, the black Messiah. You understand? You can't have no doubt. Even though we will, you got to remember to move forward within it. It's cur There's no wrong with having a little fear. You're going to have a fear, but it's what you do with that fear that is that what God looks at. 1 Timothy 1 and 7. Then we'll go back to Sarat 2. 1 Timothy 1 and 7. Uh, um, is it 2 Timothy 1 and 7? It's 2 Timothy. But God, yeah. Verse 7. Go ahead. Book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1 and verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, uh -huh. but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And that power is, is going through whatever you're going through with the fear attached to you. You understand? Because fear is going to be there. But it's what you do with that fear. I'm still going to go through it, my punishment. I'm still going to go through the affliction. Because I would call it to my mind that I fear God more than the fear I feel right now. You understand? Let's go back to Sarat 2. So you're going to have it. But God said, I didn't give that spirit of fear on you. The spirit within you, I didn't give you that spirit of fear. You're going to have that fear by natu naturally because of the, the cause, the curses. The curses, we had that fear. Go ahead. Let me so, prove that. I'm sorry. Deuteronomy 28. Yes, sir. 64. I think I want a 63. Tomorrow. Shaking it. Sir. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 65 Watch this And among these nations thou shalt find no ease mm -hmm. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest uh -huh. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart uh -huh. And failing of eyes and sorrow of mind Naturally we got, that due, we got this due to the curses You understand? Read And because thy life The reason why it came through the curses And why God gave it to us Because we broke God's laws and commandments Read And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, uh -huh. and thou shalt fear day and night, and shalt have none assurance of thy life. And that's what fear we had when we didn't know, when we broke God's laws and commandments. But now we're coming back to God's laws and commandments. He's telling us, listen, yes, it, you, you should have the spirit of fear. I didn't give you that spirit of fear as far as running away and leaving like we reading these curses. When it comes to me, you stand still and have patience in me. That's why he said, because I will help you. Go through it. I went through, I'm faithful to you. You go through and be faithful unto me. That's what he's saying. But we cannot run away. That's why he said, do not run away. That's In Surah 2, it says, do not make haste. We got straight further in this thing. Let's go back to Surah 2. Yes, sir. The book of Surah, chapter 2 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. Believe in him and he will help thee. Order thy way aright and trust in him. John to verse 10. Verse 10. Look at the generations of old and see. Go back and look at your forefathers. Look what they went through. We just read about Jeremiah. We just hey. read about King David. There's hey. many more. Read. Did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Did anybody trust in the Lord and been confounded? Not that I read. Read. 
Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Will anybody abide in the fear of God and was forsaken? Read. Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? Did anybody who was despised when they called upon Christ? Read. For the well, Lord. We just read in Acts 7 with Stephen. He called upon the Lord and said, receive my spirit. And guess what Christ did? He was already on his feet. A precious thing in the sight of God is seeing the death of his saints. He welcomed them home. Read. For the Lord is full of compassion. Where the Lord is? Full of compassion. He is full of compassion, Israel. And mercy, long suffering, mm -hmm. and very pitiful, and forgiveth sins, and saveth in time of affliction. And he will save you in a time of affliction. Not when you think it's time. Not when you think it's time. That's the problem with us black folks or Israelites. We think we supposed to be, he supposed to be on our time. No, that's Bruh. what the patience is for. You don't know. That's what the patience is for. You we don't know when Christ returning, but you gotta have that patience. Give me that Matthew 11 about when he said, read it again sir, before I go to Matthew 11. Yes, sir. For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering, and very pitiful, and forgiveth sins and saveth in time of affliction. Christ actually said that in Matthew 11, the last two verses. Yes, sir. That was, you know, that's Christ's character. You understand? That's how we know we know God. That's a, another class, though, but this is how we know we know God in depth, Christ in depth. He said, whoever know, whoever Know me and keep my commandments. Know him, right? But we know him, his characteristics. Watch Matthew 11, last two verses. Matthew chapter 11 and verse, verse 29. 11, 28. Verse 28. Uh -huh. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Because right now, we all are heavy laden. Through everything that's going on in the world, we are heavy laden. Read. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me. Christ said, take my yoke upon uh, you, us, and learn of him. Read. For I am meek and lowly in heart. He's compassion. He's pitiful. He just told you everything it's about too. That is his characteristic. Yeah, he was a forward man, but in his spirit, he was very lowly and uh, meek. Meek. Go ahead. And ye shall find rest unto your soul. You see that there? You will find rest in Christ because he told us the end goal. Be patient in me. Have faith in me. Keep the commandments till I return. And I promise you, you get the kingdom of heaven. Read. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And it's real light. You understand? How easy it is to uh, keep the moon. How easy it is to keep the Sabbath. How easy it is to keep the high holidays that God gave us. You understand? Honor your father and mother, which should be natural. You understand? Honor a... Uh, um, Raise, rise up for a hoary head. Have respect to your elders, the man that's been before you. Huh? How hard is that? We make it hard because we don't like order and structure. We don't <clears> want to be patient. We rather be ancients. You understand? But let's go back to Sirach 2. Yes, sir. The book of Sirach, chapter 2 and verse 10. Verse 11. For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering and very pitiful, and forgiveth sins and saveth in the time of affliction. And he saved in the time of affliction. Go ahead. Woe be, be to fearful hearts. But destruction to those that have fearful hearts, meaning you got a fearful mind and you react off that fear and leave the truth. You recant the Lord. Read. And faint hands. Uh -huh. And the sinner that goeth to way. And the sinner that go double way, uh, double minded. Go ahead. Woe unto him that is faint hearted. Woe to you, woe to you that is faint hearted. Go ahead. For he believeth not. Because when you faint hearted and you don't uh, go with go through your trials and stuff like that, you don't believe in Christ. You don't believe in Christ when you, when you stop enduring. You don't believe in Christ when you say, well, well, hell with that. I never believe that is like stuff anyway. You don't believe in God. Read. Therefore shall he not be defended. You will, Christ would not defend you when you uh, when he returns. Hold that Mark, uh, Matthew 7, 21. Yes, sir. Let's prove that. You're going to be one of these people. Matthew 7, 21. But this is what we got to pray and apply for. We got to pray for these things. We got to pray to be bold in these last days. Go ahead. The book of Matthew, chapter 7 and verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So Christ put the stipulation out. Watch this. Many shall will say to me in that day. No, just a little bit. Many will say to me in that day, mm -hmm. Lord, Lord, 
Have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. They're going to be the ones that was faint-hearted. I was in the truth. I did the work, Lord. But you ain't go through your trial and stayed in it and had patience in the Lord. You gave up. You recanted. You stopped coming around your brothers and sisters. When stuff started to rise in the world, you started to leave out because you see your brothers getting put to death. You see your sisters getting put to death. You see you're losing food, so you rather go steal and break God's laws anyway to go get food for your family. And say, you know what? I ain't nothing. Lord forgot he forsaken me, so I'm going to go do this evil. Are you going to be that person? Or are you going ah. to be anxious? Or are you going to have patience in the Lord? Read. And then will I profess unto them, mm-hmm. I never knew you. Mm-hmm. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. That's you that being faint-hearted and left up out of here because you didn't believe. Let's go back to Sirach 2. Sir. The book of Sirach, chapter 2 and verse 12. Mm-hmm. Woe be to the fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that goeth to ways. Mm-hmm. Woe unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not. Mm-hmm. Therefore he shall not be defended. Uh-huh. Woe unto you that have lost patience. So the Lord says destruction unto you if you lost patience. Hey. You, we got necessary patience, y'all. You're supposed to have that necessary patience and have the faith in Jesus Christ and the black Messiah while keeping the commandments and abstain from fornication. Read. And what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? What, he, what you going to do? I know what you're going to do. Lord, did we prophesy to your name, man? We, we, we was out there feeding. We was feeding the sheep the word that you told us to do. But he will profess unto you he never knew you. That record of iniquity. Why? Because you was faint-hearted. You wasn't faithful to him. Read. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. We will not disobey his word. Read. And they that love him will keep his ways. No matter what we go through, we're going to keep Christ's ways. Huh? Right. What was his ways? Hold that. First John. I think it's oh, second John 6. Second John 6. Sir. Second John 6. The book of second John verse 6. And this is love that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. We should walk in the Lord Christ's commandments. You understand? That's what we must do. We got to walk in his ways. Let's go back by keeping the commandments and the faith of his son, Jesus Christ, the black Messiah. He say black a lot. You right. Because you got to force into our people's heads. Because we still got that Caesar Bourget in our mind. It just sounds good, too. But read on. Sirach chapter 2 and verse 16. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well-pleasing unto him. Because things that's pleasing unto the Lord, for example, Sirach 20, 28. Yes, sir. I'll give you one that's pleasing unto the Lord. The book of Sirach chapter 20 and verse 28. Uh-huh. He that tilleth his land shall increase his heat. Uh-huh. And he that pleaseth great men shall get pardon for iniquity. That's one way right there. When you please the, the man that God set up, that's, you get pardon for iniquity, not just by, by chance, because one, they're praying for you. They understand you got a spirit in you that you want to do right and get better. They pray for those. You understand? That's why the scripture says, submit yourself to uh, the ones that rule well, if I'm not, might be butchering it. But to that script, you understand? Read on. I mean, go back. Yes, sir. The book of Sirach, chapter 2 and verse 17. Verse I'm sorry, again. verse 16. Yep. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well-pleasing unto him. Uh-huh. And they that love him shall be filled with the law. Uh-huh. They that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts. Ah, that's what we must do while we wait on the Lord patiently in this time of learning. Because believe hey. it or not, this is the time of learning before Christ start bringing the massive, uh, massive destruction to upon us, the uh, Jacob's trouble upon us. You understand? Right now, we need to prepare our minds for the things to come. Not being La La Land, read. And humble their souls in his sight. Meaning pray to him. Go ahead. Saying, we will fall into the hands of the Lord. We will rather fall into the, lands of the uh, hands of the Lord. And not into the hands of men. Uh-huh. For as his majesty is, so, so is his mercy. And that's what it is. So we must obtain the patience of the Lord and not be anxious. You know what I'm saying, brothers? And just get an example for the sisters real quick. Luke 10, last four verses. Yes, sir. Just in case sisters feel... Uh, Left out. Because you got a choice to make. It were two sisters. They're going to give you, you got to choose between one of these two sisters. I think it's Luke 10. 
Yes, sir. Is it Luke 10? Luke four, chapter 10 and 38. Let me get that. Let me get that, sir. Uh, I'm Mark and Mary. Yep, that's it. Come yes, on. Sir. Luke chapter 10 and verse 38. Not Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. Okay, so there's two people, sisters, Mary and Martha. Go ahead. And she had a sister called Mary, uh -huh. which also sat at Jesus' feet. What did his sister do? Sat at Jesus' feet. Come on. And heard his word. Come on. But Martha was cumbered about with much serving and came to him and said, Lord, doest thou not care that my sister have left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. So this sister said, this is said command her, Lord, to help me. Right? This is Mary and Martha. Watch this, what, the, what Christ say. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Martha, Martha, you, you, you trouble about way too much things, read. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. So you got a choice to make, sisters. Either you're going to be Martha or Mary. Are you going to be Mary that seek the Lord and study, pray, and apply? Or listen to your husband and, and guide the house that you're supposed to? Or you're going to be Martha that worry about every other thing than the right thing? So you got two, you got choices to make too, sisters. You understand? Now, read that last part, ag uh, last part again. But one thing is needful, and Martha hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away and from her. And that thing that's not going to be taken away, for, away from her is the understanding of Christ. You understand? So, Revelations 14, 12, we're ending off with this. Yes, sir. The book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 12. Here is the patience. Here's the what? The patience. Here's the necessary patience. Of the saints. Of the Israelites. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. Uh -huh. And the faith of Jesus. And with that, we say shalom, Israel. Come on, we need y'all to subscribe to help us push. We got a lot of work to do in North Carolina. The Carolinas need this work. Right. You know what I'm saying? North Carolina need this work. So we need y'all to go and subscribe right now. Grab your finger. This one right here in particular. Right. Swipe the YouTube that you're probably already watching. Click the YouTube app. Right. Go to IUIC Riley page. Right up under there, it says subscribe. Click that button one time. Click that check. Subscribe to IUIC Riley. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation 